get started on. So uh, welcome to Neighboring 101. This is the monthly program or gathering where we talk with leaders and uh, others in the neighboring movement nationwide, people that have an interest in using neighboring to improve their community or for their own personal development. So uh, thank you for being here. We're glad to have people all across the Midwest and United States uh, represented and involved in this. Hey, I don't know about you, but it just seems to me like there's a whole lot of buzz going on about things related to neighboring. Not, not just Missouri Good Neighbor Week, which we'll talk about some, and not just even National Good Neighbor Day, which we're going to talk about to begin with, but there's just a lot of buzz going around the country, it seems. It, it's, I seem to get a call or an email, maybe, maybe not every day, but most days from someone who has learned about this topic and wants to know more or wants to get involved, and that is really exciting to see. Let me just toss out a couple of numbers that I just looked up this morning that maybe is an indicator of that increased interest because these are all double, triple what the comparison was last year. So our social media post that went out five days ago uh, promoting Missouri Good Neighbor Week, it's coming up. It's already had 33,000 views and over 1,800 people have already clicked through to the website for that. And that's, that's like triple what I had last year toward the end of the week. <laughs> not even the first, you know, it's not even started. We had, uh, we've had over 3,500 unique visitors to our website already for Missouri Good Neighbor Day or Good Neighbor Week, I'm sorry. Uh, there was an article in the Springfield Daily Citizen uh, recently that I wrote about Missouri Good Neighbor Week. And they had, they told me they've had over 3,000 unique reads of that article in the first five days. And I just looked on our website, since we'd had so many click-throughs and views, we've already had 19 people nominated as the most engaged neighbor in their county. And only two of those are from the same county. So we already have 18 of Missouri's 114 counties represented with nominees for most engaged neighbor. So I was really encouraged by that. It just seems to be a whole lot of interest and excitement growing and building and that you're all a part of that, part of the discussion, and it's exciting to see. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to kind of talk about some of those great plans this year. And like I said, we're still waiting on a few other people to click on that I know have plans underway that I asked them to, to share about for, for that. But uh, I wanted to begin kind of at the macro level uh, with Tim to tell us, and then we'll go to a a special guest that we have from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch right after uh, uh, Tim. But uh, Tim, you're the owner of the National Good Neighbor Day .com URL. You're always talking about neighboring everywhere. Tell us about what you're seeing with National Good Neighbor Day and the excitement of that and what you have going on around that holiday. Yeah, thank you, David, for your advocacy, but also for your continued inspiration uh, each year, you keep on building blocks to really help the rest of the country see a model there in Missouri. And at National Good Neighbor Day, what's new this year, we have implemented a Google map system where people can drop in their zip code to identify that they're participating in National Good Neighbor Day. Uh, it simply starts with hello. So it starts with hello is our theme this year trying to engage people to say hello, begin conversations. And I love your word, David, you know, engagement. And I just want you to know that Missouri is rocking and rolling because the map on National Good Neighbor Day, if you zoom out, you can see the total count. And Missouri is just blowing everyone else away. Woo! <laughs> and as they say in statistics, you know, numbers don't lie unless, no, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I will add this uh, what we are seeing is people are wanting to live in a place of peace. I spoke for our annual HOA board meeting this past Saturday. Um, annually on the agenda is a National Good Neighbor Day update. And I talked about the power of peace in a community. Because the opposite is what really actually would cause people to want to move away, sell the house, you know, and find someplace else to live because it's just not safe, it's dangerous. And in a world right now that has experienced, you know, war in nations, 
unrest um, and incivility, America needs to step up and show what it looks like to be a nation of peace. A neighboring is really where we have the most influence and control. And that's what I told our neighbors on Saturday. Uh, there were about 60 neighbors there. And I referenced the fact that around the world, and I work internationally um, in, in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, where there's been unrest in Haiti. I grew up there, lived under a dictator. And even right now, there's uh, gang controlled areas that have affected some of our international work, but our local mission operations are fully functioning. Why? Because you have local leadership and influence. So in the United States, there may be unrest in certain spots where there's violence or unfortunate realities of living conditions. But on your street and where you live is where you can have the greatest influence and impact. We can't control the world. We may not even be able to control from you know, Long Beach, California to Bar Harbor, Maine, the whole nation, but we can influence where we live. So what I'm seeing right now is the sentiment of people wanting peace where they live. Uh, that promotes protection, that promotes prosperity, but then they also understand they can't influence and change the entire nation as a whole with one pivot, but they can where they live in proximity. So I've been really kind of pushing these words of peace, proximity, and people. Um, if you want peace where you live, ask the question, who's in proximity, and then say hello and get to know the people near you. Wow. That's great, Tim. Those are, I'm glad I've got the recorder press this time. Uh, so I can go back and listen to that again. Thank you. Well said. Well said. What, what was, um, I think it was NeighborLink in Indiana, the, the research project with, uh, and, and they said the top three people, top three things people look for in a neighborhood, clean, safe, friendly. That kind of all hovers around that idea of peace in the, in the neighborhood. I mean, if you can have a role in making that happen, wow, that's quite a motivator for people. But uh, I, you probably know, you probably saw that, uh, I mean, you've been talking about National Good Neighbor Day for, for a long time. And then Missouri Good Neighbor Week comes along. And now I see Good Morning America and State Farm are promoting Good Neighbor Month all of September, you know? So uh, are you getting a sense that there's a lot of, there's an increased interest in it this well, year? There is, there is an increased need for it. I think the interest level from a large level branding standpoint is very fascinating to me. I know that um, Hershey had done a campaign around s'mores in neighborhoods. And when you think of State Farm, you know, obviously like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There's a lot of brands that want to have a true communal impact because of the fact of social awareness. So if I see someone using a product, it's the fastest way for me to buy it. So if I go to my neighbor's house and see a ring doorbell, the, pro the probability of me wanting one, um, Warren Buffett said it best, it's actually not greed that grows the economy, it's envy. And so the envy is the seeing others have a boat, therefore you want a boat. Or, wow, I like David's fence. He painted it a really nice green. I think I want a green fence. And so it's a very strange psychological battle we face. Um, but I do believe that there is a greater desire. Um, and in, I've one of the interesting loves I have in life, David, is coffee. And I'll travel the country and go to independent coffee shops. And you think about a lot of these coffee places or even local businesses, and I'm a real big pro, you know, shop local kind of person. There's a lot of people that are trying to build community again. Uh, there's a lady in our town here in Eusis that started a candle making business where you can go in and make your own scent and bring a group of people. And I'm thinking, wow, what is happening? We're, we're, our polarization is shifting back to a word called community where we, we've gone to the Netflix situation where we used to go to the theater. Now we stay home and watch and make our own puppy mm -hmm. to now we're finding places to go. Uh, last um, Friday night for date night, my wife and I went to a local uh, restaurant that has live entertainment. And one of my neighbors was playing drums in the band. I couldn't believe the amount of people that were there to listen to a live band in a very small menu. You know, two years ago, it wouldn't have happened. But yeah. now I think commu community is becoming a hunger again. Uh, so I would, I would use the term as a high level of interest because we're kind of swinging back to this idea that community matters. And if you think about human nature, it's essential for our living. Uh, we, we, we do need the herd or we do need the pack. We need the people. 
it may maybe uh, COVID helped spawn some of that, but it sure seems to be uh, much more a, a larger, more powerful movement than even before COVID hit. So yes, sir. It, uh, yeah, that would be an interesting study. I would think so. I, I think we are coming into a new age of the awareness for togetherness and National Good Neighbor Day is a catalyst for it. I think these other brands that are diving in, why not? They need some social you know, impact right now because they've been so isolated. Yeah. Well, are there some other ways that we can join in and celebrating uh, Missouri Good Neighbor Day and, and whether it's Tim or or Jennifer, you, Jennifer, you've been very involved in organizing a, a coalition of people from across the United States to get behind this idea of National Good Neighbor Day and help promote it. Are there some other ways we can jump in and, and take part? I don't, there's, there's so many ways. It's hard to uh, kind of narrow them down, but working together with Tim and others uh, to get that map on National Good Neighbor Day site was a really exciting one for us because it's just a nice visual of, you know, how many, how much impact just, just one person can make. Um, and then Tim also added, and he might have mentioned this, like a real, little resource button on the site. So if you click on that, um, you can look for all sorts of different resources that might fit fit your context the best, whether you're working with another group of people, if you're an individual neighbor wanting to reach out, if you're, you know, a local government, there's all sorts of different organizations that have uh, some different ideas and resources on there. Um, so I would check that out. Um, and it's great news, David, about how much traction we're getting on the site in Missouri. So um, just keep up that good work of uh, nominating those neighbors. You all probably know this, uh, but for all the anyone who's nominated in Missouri um, for being a good neighbor and engaged neighbor, we're getting they're going to get a little gift card, um, Amazon gift card from Hopeful Neighborhood Project, a little bit of swag. So uh, even if they don't get chosen for a final prize, we're going to make sure we let them know that they are appreciated. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, so just keep up those nominations and the acts of neighboring. So we've got to get to ten thousand this year. Um, and there's some ideas on that site um, for that as well. But it can be as simple as you know coloring some of the the postcards that we have linked up in different places that say start with hello and passing those out or oh david do you have one there i was gonna say i have a few that have been colored i don't know i'm not a uh i'm not an expert colorer by any means but uh, a couple of different designs and they're fun to do and they're uh they pretty great. relaxing actually so yeah oh chet's got his <laughs> <laughs> i just dropped a link uh yeah, oh that's so good kids dropped a link in the chat that's where the template is at if you want to download the template for these uh, postcards and print a few off and use them or use them on a tag if you yeah, give something right. to a neighbor or something even right so. yeah yeah and those invite your neighbors to participate in good neighbor day too so you can drop them off a couple of days early and gives them a couple little ideas on the back you know even if you just take sidewalk chalk and all of your neighborhood people write you know happy <laughs> happy good neighbor day and we love our neighborhood you know even that just helps promote that piece that tim was talking about so uh anyway absolutely i could talk about this all day so i won't <laughs> <laughs> Well, you still you still have 45 minutes. You're welcome to jump in at any time. <laughs> well, let me start. <laughs> and, 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 and chime in. So Jennifer, uh, I I will I will echo that. I like the chalk for the driveway to write happy good neighbor day. What a great idea. And then also that resource button on National Good Neighbor Day. If anyone has a recommended resource you'd like to have added to that, uh, just simply contact me. It's easy to reach me through the site or just put a comment. Um, but literally, that is something we want to continue to add to as we're finding what's working and people are experiencing it real time where they live. Yeah. Here's one other sidewalk chalk idea that because I started my career as a kindergarten teacher, <laughs> um, you can do activities all over your neighborhood. So you can write like, you know, hopscotch and then in a block later, an inspirational quote and a block later, like, you know, give a high five to the next neighbor you meet, whatever. Um, but that's something my kids and I like to do is, you know, kind of make different activities that are kind of interactive just on, on our walk or just inspiring messages that you, you write around. So. That's right. a that's a great idea. Well, I, I'm hoping I know on that in that coalition, there's several people who have authored books on neighboring topics in the last few 
few years, uh, I think of Melanie Warnick and uh, Amy Lively and Lynn Corey from California, a few others that have said they're going to use that day and the days leading up to it to really promote National Good Neighbor Day with their audiences, through their blogs and emails. And so uh, hopefully that'll really gain traction and we're all in this together. And I love that multiple people are sharing the idea out. Well, well, you two can always jump in, but let's uh, pan, pan in now a little bit closer. It's closer in that it's in Missouri, but still a national audience, actually. Uh, good to see Lynn Schmidt on here with us. Lynn is a, uh, a columnist and editorial board member for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And uh, back on August 16th, had a column entitled, The Nation's Health May Well Depend on the People Getting to Know Each Other Again. That was the column title. And I think it ended up going nationwide because I didn't see it on August 16th in the Post-Dispatch. I saw it the next day in the Columbia, Missourian. So Lynn, welcome and congratulations on that column spreading nationwide, it looks like, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll put the link um, in the chat as well. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me um, this afternoon. I almost said morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, um, I wrote the column and I didn't even know your efforts. So um, I think it's really great. David, you reached out and um, I'm, I'm really pleased with um, the work that you guys are doing doing. Um, yeah, so I, um, I've i also forwarded the information on, um, on good, good Missouri Good Neighbor Week to, um, to the, to the news division. Um, and I don't know what if they'll do anything with that. So I'm on the opinion side, we are totally separate from the news side. But, yeah. um, but I passed it along anyway, so. Well, for, well perhaps yeah. so. Well, you said you didn't know about these efforts, true, but there was obviously something that uh, pinged at your heart and caused you to end up writing the article you, you did, and we'll drop that link. I can drop the link in if it's if it's better. Oh, it, yeah, if you don't mind, I guess. Sure, I'd be glad to. It, I, I just thought it was really well written, and I would say that even Thanks. if you weren't here, mm -hmm. and, and, and it really hit several of the different hot button topics uh, or issues over the topic. But so you had your finger on the pulse of something uh, somehow. So what kind of led you to the topic and to do the column? So I, um, I am right of center, but very much pro-democracy, pro-America. I am very nervous about um, well, not nervous, worried about the hyperpolarization and um, and just the divisions. And I do tend to write columns ab about how we can heal as a nation. So um, that's sort of a theme that that I like to write. I do write about politics, but I try personally not to be divisive at all. Um, and and really try to um, to to promote healing and and you know it's interesting I I think there's this narrative in the in the media of which I am a part of admittedly that that things are really bad out here you know um, and that's really not what I see I I, I hear from people all over the country, because I am nationally syndicated, that, you know, that want that kind of unifying message. And also, you know, they're like, yeah, I love my neighbor. I mean, I, I got tons of emails from readers all across the country saying, you know, let me tell you about my neighbor, you know, and so that was just really nice. So, wow. Well, that is wonderful to hear that you had that kind of feedback. Huh? Was it? Yeah. Uh, more than what you normally see on a column, what you would gauge if there's a little more interest in this and some um, other things, or I don't know more, but um, but quite a bit for sure. Yeah, um, it depends what I'm writing about, um, the amount of, of feedback I get, but but yeah, 
Well, you, if, if you all have time, I, I, I'd encourage you to read the article. It is a, it is a good one. And you, uh, even in things that people share during this time here, you may see other examples of uh, what you put your, your finger on. Uh, and some people I know have written and said that some of this divisiveness comes from the fact that we're on a screen all the time. We don't have much face-to-face -face with people and it's easy to be uh, cranky <laughs> across the screen, say things we might not normally say face-to-face -face, and that we've really lost the ability to visit, to get along with people who have different ideas. And uh, one way to overcome that is to build those relationships with neighbors. Um, yeah. I know I was shocked to find out that not all of my neighbors thought exactly like I do. Shocked, <laughs> shocked, I tell you. But uh, so people, you know, your neighbors do have different ideas and that's really one of the things we've lost the ability to do. And then you see it play out in these bigger, bigger themes, bigger areas. Well, and I think the, the part about neighbors is, is particularly applicable because I mean most of you on this call know that you know our social institutions are losing um, membership and you know um, whether it's like volunteer groups or you know um, and church communities are losing membership and um, and and sometimes those bigger issues are just overwhelming. Like you think, oh, well, I don't know how to solve these big, big problems. But it's as easy as just talking to your neighbor. I mean, and and just sort of giving people just some some idea of what they can do. I mean, we all have neighbors, right? I mean, no matter where you live. So um so yeah, I think it's really great. The, the culture kind of pushes back on that and says uh, a good neighbor is someone who's quiet and leaves me alone uh, uh, lots of times. But so in writing the uh, the article and the research you did, did you was there anything in particular that maybe surprised you or anything that maybe motivated you personally? Um, I don't. I don't know that anything surprised me, but what motivated me is, um, is well, and I and I put in the column, um, you know, after the flooding um, was at a couple months now already. Um, you know, we had some issues. I live in St. Charles County. We had some some issues with um, our lake flood. We live on a lake. Um, and my husband, who's an ER physician and works out of town, he works in rural communities, um, he's gone for days at a time. And so these things always come up when he is not home, right? Um, and it's just, it was just really nice. I mean, I knew immediately who I could call and, and, and ask to help. And, um, and he was more than happy to, to help me. Um, so... Yeah, that that's sort of what motivated motivated me. But um. yeah, that's a great that's a great example. And I know uh, Jennifer or Tim, you may want to jump in here too. I I know I've been getting some questions about National Good Neighbor Day or Missouri Good Neighbor Week about why would you do that? Why would you promote that? Um, that's not going to fix anything. Sort of mm. uh, questions. Um, so, sure. <laughs> so I don't know what, what would the three of you say to that sort of question and pushback about why even celebrate a holiday like that? I think it can make a difference. I mean, you guys are the experts in this field. I'm not, but I really do think it can make a difference for sure. Jennifer, what? Jennifer, you're on your edge of your seat. Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to teach kindergarten. I mentioned that before. And uh, the kids always would want to know this was a, a long time ago in a different kind of setting. But you know, if I had to step in the hallway, the kids would be like, who's in charge? Who's in charge? And I would say to them, everyone's in charge of yourself. 
if you're doing the right thing, there's not going to be any problem <laughs> while I step out here and talk to the students. <laughs> and that's how I feel about feel about neighboring, right? If each of us are doing the right thing, if we're each being an engaged neighbor and taking care of each other, it can solve those bigger issues. Um, we don't need just one person in charge. Um, if we're all doing the right thing, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. <laughs> that's yeah. my microcosm uh, <laughs> thought always of my little, my little five-year-olds. <laughs> and I rarely had a problem. I don't know if I ever had a problem when I stepped into the hallway because they're all like, okay, got it. <laughs> I get it well, now. I'm in charge well, that of absolutely, <laughs> absolutely applies. We know from the uh, what that poem or short story, everything you need in life, you learned in kindergarten. So, mm -hmm. so right, words of wisdom from the kindergarten <laughs> teacher. I love, right. I love that. Right, uh, Tim. What, what? How about you? Why do you think this is important? Well, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go hyper personal. Um, I was the neighbor that didn't like my neighbors, and I was not the good neighbor. Um, mm -hmm. I ignored the people to the left and the right, and. Didn't, I may have known their first names, but really didn't ever think of inviting them over. Uh, we ended up relocating because my uh, wife's mom lost her husband and we wanted to live closer to my mother-in-law. I don't know if that's a good idea for most people, but it worked <laughs> anyway. So but here, here's, here's what happened before the Zoom. I actually went for a bike ride with a neighbor. Uh, he works from home and I am at happened to be home today because I was at a taping this morning nearby for a message I'm sharing on September 25th for National Good Neighbor Day. And so came home, was ready for this. And he texted me literally at 1115, 1120, you know, ride question mark. And that's our code, you know, want to go for a bike ride. And he's working from home. He's going to go on lunch break. He starts working early in the morning because most of his team are over in London. So we went for a bike ride for 40 minutes and caught up on life. And we're actually going sailing this Saturday uh, in his sailboat. That he has down at the lake here in Eustis. But what's amazing about that is what I'm going to call lifestyle and friendship. What is that worth? I mean, really, you know, so if you meet one neighbor, like I may not be able to change the world and reach everyone everywhere. I don't have a stage that big, but if I reach, if one or two or three neighbors get to know one another and their lifestyle, their life is better. Isn't that worth it? Right. And so I'm experiencing it myself. Like being the good neighbor has been good to me as much as it may have been good to some of my neighbors. Um, and it, it works. Like one of the things we are finding in our neighborhood is that people are looking out for one another, not just from a safety standpoint, but we have some um, people that are senior adult. And uh, we had a couple come over this last weekend and, you know, he has some health issues. My wife's in the medical field. So they were able to talk and kind of be aware of what issues he may face. And so her, his wife knows if there's a crisis, you know, call us up, you know, my wife's a nurse. She'll just check in and see how you're doing. That's huge. Um, I, I don't know if you can really say that that's something that everyone will experience, but I think you could, they could experience something similar. You know, yeah. what, what, what is the benefit to you for being a good neighbor? I believe it does make life safer, better, and I think personally, I'll just say as, a, as an ex someone experiencing it, I just think it adds value to where we live. It really does. Excellent. And you use that word Actually, lifestyle. It really, it really is a, a daily lifestyle. It's not just a one-time thing that you do. Right. Yeah. And this is a kickoff. I think National Good Neighbor Day, it can be a spark, you know, um, Good Neighbor Week, it can be a spark. And, and, and I, I actually think that once we begin to make it that lifestyle, it becomes the norm. You know, so every day is a good day to be a good yeah. neighbor. So I have another um, example. Um, so I have a 17 year old daughter who is working to earn her Girl Scout Gold Service Award. Um, and um, she has some interest in birds. And so one of our other neighbors, not the one I just talked about, um, is an elderly woman who is also interested in birds. And she actually became my daughter's project advisor and, you know, has sort of mentored her and taught her about birding and provided her with resources. So anyway, um, you know, it goes full circle. Now my daughter is installing some bluebird nest boxes in local parks to help promote the Missouri bluebird population, which is our state bird. And so, I mean, and that's all sort of sparked from this connection she had 
with an elderly neighbor. So, well, that's one, and what a great thing that is for the elderly neighbor too, who mm-hmm. elderly population often, you know, really suffers from loneliness, giving her connection right. and activity too. That's a great, that's a great example. Well, for, I, I think we have said this previously about Missouri Good Neighbor Week and National Good Neighbor Day. It's not the, it, it's not the finish line. It's the, it's the starting point. It's the start with hello, but that's not the finish line, right? So uh, the hope is that this gives a little spark plug for people to, to carry on and do some things as part of the lifestyle. I, I know we have a, uh, at least one that has joined us. I had, I had three lined up to, to share uh, some neighboring activities that they have going on. And then uh, we're just going to open up for a, a free discussion for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, Lynn, thank you for being with us. Um, but I know Elaine Montgomery, I don't see Elaine on here. Uh, Elaine was one of the uh, Missouri award winners last year for good neighboring. She organized a event in a north side neighborhood in Springfield for document shredding, along with donuts and coffee and had over a hundred neighbors uh, come and get their documents sa- safely shredded. And uh, she's doing that again, but involving two neighborhoods this year, she told me. So she's hoping for twice as many people this year for document shredding along with donuts and coffee. And uh, I think she's doing that on the, the Saturday after the 28th, I believe is what she told me. But So she's going bigger and better this year. Uh, Sherry McAllister in Houston, I just heard from her this week. Uh, last year, they were recognized as the best, uh, of, best of Missouri Neighboring Award. They give, gave away 2,500 roses in that community. People picked them up and gave them to friends. Uh, and neighbors to say thank you on Good Neighbor Day. And to keep that in context, the, the whole town's population is 2,900 people. I mean, the entire town. And they and they did 2,500 roses. Uh, mm-hmm. This year, she says she's already got them ordered, being delivered 3,000 roses, all sponsored volunteers that individually tag those roses for people to pick up and give away. And they're doing a free community showing that Friday in the community theater they have of the Mr. Rogers movie with uh, Tom Hanks. So they're really building on that theme even more. So she's shooting for uh, 400 people at the, the movie screening viewing and 3000 roses. So she's up in her numbers and game too. She's uh, she's really been after it. And then one other person who's on that I really want, I wanted her to be able to share. And I know she's had a hurried day <laughs> and Amber Greek, it's good to see you. I know you've been running around and try, trying to get on here in time to join us and give us an, a little bit of an update. Amber got a, a grant from University of Missouri Extension in the spring to help bring to life a, a dream that she had for reaching out to her neighbors. And I am not going to steal the thunder because no one can explain it better than Amber about what she did and what the uh, outcome of that work was. Well, I wish I could say I had visuals, um, but I do not unless I was to walk you out there and I will. So I'll just share you what my my vision was and is. Um, I was going on a walk one day while I was my daughter was at swim with my son and I came across this. um, So I I can't take the thunder or the credit. Um, I was on a walk uh, down in one of our midtown neighborhoods and came across this sweet little sign that said, Well, first I saw some flowers on the left and it wasn't anything spectacular, um, but they were just everywhere and kind of wiry and it was an older neighborhood. Um, And so I would somehow I glanced at the fence and there was a little, a little Sharpie marker picket fence post that said, please cut a flower. And it had scissors right next to the fence post. And I just about fell over. And so I didn't pick just one. I may have gotten a little bit Uh, excited. Um, Anyways, it just, it inspired me so much that I have done the same thing in my yard. Um, It didn't go as well as I had planned, so I wish I could have this beautiful bouquet to present to you to show. Um, So that didn't work out, but um, it's a learning curve when it comes to gardening, and I just jumped in head first, and so I was able to provide myself with some flowers, and then we also 
rent out a, a camper for people to take, you know, to the lake on the weekends and whatnot. So I've been able to cut bouquets um, for our renters and put those in the in the camper with them. But we haven't it. It just kind of I don't know if the flowers just suffocated themselves. I was not sure what, but that was my that's my goal. And um, it's there. But, you know, it's it's not producing as many flowers as I want. And nobody really you know, they're a little bit nervous to come up into the yard. <laughs> <laughs> well, admittedly, July was the hottest uh, July in record in Missouri, I think. So your your flowers had a lot to contend with at that time. But you you kind of built, uh, I, th I think if I remember from the picture I saw, they're raised bed gardens that you built. Yes. Uh, kind, of, kind of up in the yard, but in some areas close to the sidewalk. And I know that your sign that you had made is much fancier than just a Sharpie and a piece of paper. Yeah, correct. Yes. I, I had a pretty good sign that was made um, and I did not shellac it. So it's, it's a little bit faded. Um, so just, you know, it's, it's my first year and it's definitely a learning process and I'm excited to, to do better next year and do a little bit more research and, you know, it's trial and error, you, you know, it, it's trial and error for sure. Well, you have the you have the idea going for sure, and the nice sign encouraging people to cut flowers and yes. take with them, and, uh, and everything. You've got a great location where people walk and the sidewalk and things. Mm -hmm. So now all we need is weather to cooperate and uh, some horticulture experience, which it sounds like you're gaining. <laughs> yes, I'm gaining, and I might need to have to you know send you a few emails to give me some connections with that. <laughs> I think we can come up with some free seeds for you too, if you're wanting to start from seed, but uh, that has its own our, challenges too. Our uh, neighborhood uh, project coach for the Hopeful Neighborhood Project is a fantastic gardener and she would love this idea. So if you want some free overall coaching on how can I use this for my neighbors and what flowers should I grow? She wrote me a nice little email when I tried to start my little cut flower garden, but I never thought about putting it out in the front. So that's a fantastic idea. I'm so excited, but yeah, reach out. We can get you her contact, reach out. She'd love to help you like brainstorm which flowers would be best and you know how to grow them or whatever. Okay. Remember Amber, I'll send you Sarah's email and connect you both. But it sounds like Amber's being called out in chat too. Apparently her <laughs> former neighbor is online and says that you're already an awesome neighbor, Amber. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> Nancy Williams is calling you out. Oh, Nancy, yes. I miss her. <laughs> Kevin Bull, yes. We miss you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what a treat. <laughs> Did some of your neighbors this year uh, uh, comment about the garden or the effort or uh, any feedback? Uh, I didn't get as much feedback as I was hoping. And I mean, I would sit on my porch and I would be like, look, <laughs> look. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, and I think it's, I, I'm not quite sure why. So I, I don't want to be, you know, sound like a, a negative Nelly, but I, it didn't go as well as I had hoped. Um, and my local, my, um, my like my right hand and left hand neighbors they you know I don't even think they came over if they did I was unaware of it well I, I know one evening uh Stacy and I during that July we Stacy and my wife Stacy and I sit on the driveway with some water and sodas and stuff on ice just to you know offering to people and they came walking by and I'd say 98 percent of everybody said no <laughs> And these these people, we, a lot were people we knew and neighbors. Hey, you want to you want a cold water? No, we're good. <laughs> and just keep on walking. So I don't know if if everybody's leery about taking something for free or I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And walking it in because where I saw my flower garden, it was literally I could spread my arms out on either side and probably touch flowers on either side in the middle of the sidewalk. So it was easy, you know, people could just walk by and just snag a few as they were walking by if they would have wanted. Um, but, you know, to actually take some scissors and walk into someone's yard, you know, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to just do some brainstorming and, and try and make it even better for next year. Well, keep up the good work. Keep after it. Thanks for giving us a little update. And I'm glad we could do a reunion between you and Nancy. Uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, while we have time, um, again, this is a little bit of a smaller group, but uh, is anyone planning anything for Missouri Good Neighbor Week? 
small or large, uh, or National Good Neighbor Day, where they're at, that they'd like to share with this group before we wrap up. We'd love to hear about it. You're welcome to unmute yourself and uh, and share if you've made any plans to do anything. I guess I'll, I'll do a quick share. Chet right now are in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I, not specifically organizing around National Good Neighbor Day, but I'm getting married next weekend, and there's probably 20 neighbors that within a block from me that I have <coughs> invited to my wedding because they have, um, you know, they have been part of that real world social and support network um, that has been there for me day in and day out. Um, I see I see many of, of these neighbors more often than I see my family, more often than I see, you know, a lot of my a lot of my friends. Um, and uh, uh, it's just going to be really special for them to uh, to be there uh, on our on our special day. So um, I think we're organizing some carpools, uh, some some lift XLs uh, to get to and from the. Um, so we're getting married at a big summer camp, so there'll be big big bonfires and. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share to share this new chapter uh, with uh, with a bunch of my neighbors. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great example. Great example. I know in the Springfield or in the uh, Republic, Missouri area, there's a new neighborhood association. It's going to launch on that Saturday after uh, Good Neighbor Day as part of Missouri Good Neighbor Week. So uh, introducing people, the idea of a neighborhood association. Um, Stacy and I are making uh, cupcakes for all of our neighbors, uh, 15 households that we have more contact with than others and using these uh, Good Neighbor Day cards. Thank you, Tim and, and Jennifer both for the clever idea uh, using those on those when we make delivery that's what we were doing personally but there may be some other other ideas floating out there too would love to hear them if you want to share it's a chance to get get some ideas and share some ideas um i have a so my name is dylan milliken i work at a community partnership of the ozarks here in springfield yes um and uh we are doing I'm actually going to be running uh, my first cleanup uh, for the Grant Beach Neighborhood Association. Uh, I think it's like on the 27th, I believe. Um, so I started just a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I'm kind of I'm really excited to do that. And uh, we're hoping for a really good turnout on that. Um, but yeah, so I, this was also just kind of to introduce myself and to get to know like what, you know, neighborhoods are doing here in Missouri. And I just really want to learn as much as I can. So Excellent. Well, Dylan, nice to meet you and make your acquaintance. I just saw an email from you and we'll be visiting about the tool library project that you're involved. Oh, with yes, yes, around. yes. That's you. Yeah. 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 So we'll, uh, I'll catch up with you here before the week's over on that. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Sounds good. I have a, a question for Dylan and yeah. David, maybe, I don't know if you all have, has any of you collaborated on the idea of a shared tool shed for neighborhoods? that that's what uh that's what dylan kind of heads up now with yeah partnership of the ozarks the only one in missouri is in springfield missouri yeah so um i haven't really like tried to collaborate on anything like that this is also my third week working here but um we do for right now it is on the north side of springfield um it's right like kind of off of glenstone if a lot of you are familiar with the springfield area um, North Glenstone, but um, so it kind of caters to that side of Springfield mostly, but um, I could definitely see it kind of growing to other parts of Springfield for sure. But um, it was originally downtown at the uh, community partnership uh, main uh, office there. So it more recently it grew outgrew that area. So we had to get another shed and bring it here. So it's definitely growing, and uh, that's honestly a really good idea. I have ne never actually really even thought of that, but um, but yeah, that's probably the information I have. As Your predecessor a Hannah King shared about it maybe a year ago. Oh, really? Uh, okay, yeah. On this and showed a few slides and discussed the uh, uh, the software I think that you guys use to track things being checked in and out. And Tim, they do everything from uh, 
garden tillers and lawn mowers to hand tools. Yeah. So, okay. and uh, I think still charge a, a monthly membership fee. It's yearly. So it's an annual. Um, so it goes from like April 15th to the next April. But what's awesome about it is, uh, so for the whole year, it's $20. But as you get like throughout each quarter of that year, it goes down in price. So like right now it's like $15. And then as like the new year comes along, it'll go down to 10 and then, and so on. So it really gives, you know, an opportunity to, you know, do it as long as you want, if you don't want a year or, you know, whatever. So, but it's really awesome. And there's also a lot of like scholarship opportunities for it too. Um, but yeah, we just, yeah, we've grown quite a bit this summer. I'd say we probably have like 30 new members just this summer. So we're, at about like 120 members right now mm-hmm. for it. And so. then what, what's, what's the software that manages the inventory? Do you know? It is. Um, or I can give you my contact info. We can circle back. We just have some things that are percolating in our neighborhood and no. also um, some adjacent property that we're, we're talking with some opportunities to serve kind of a little bit more of a broader reach. Yes, it's we're, called we're, My Turn. We're, my turn okay my turn yeah it's my turn software and it is awesome it like uh you're able to like fill out an application for the tool library on there you can reserve different tool items and there's like honestly it's kind of like going to like a walmart website just that you can like reserve items so it's really cool um and there's like all the inventory on there and um there's like we get a lot of like different statistics on like what is the most popular items. Like our tiller is the most popular right now. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really cool like statistics with it as well. So it really helps us keep track of like what we need to get more donations of, or, um, you know, just what people are really using a lot of. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a really great tool for sure. Okay. So, this is David, I'll add, go ahead. I'll add, we, on the last Tuesday of the month, we do guys night out in our neighborhood. And so that's on the 27th. So we're all getting together. And part of our focus is actually asking the question, is any projects or something that somebody needs some help with? And I really would, you know, love to advocate for some of what I would call like a serve day in a community or a way that neighbors can Mm. gather to kind of move the needle on a project for someone. Like we have an elderly couple in our, in our neighborhood right now he's had some hard time lifting some things. And so I'm trying to put him on a regular schedule to check in and, you know, do you need two of us to show up and move a few things? Um, Things like that. It's just interesting to start learning, you know, no pun intended, but we're all aging, right? You know, eventually we're going to be hoping someone helps us. (laughs) So if we can't help someone today, let's do it, you know? Yeah. A service outreach is a great way to connect people. Mm -hmm. The things you learn about people while pulling weeds and cutting limbs. Yes. <laughs> well, any any others uh, wanting to share before we go? I'll mention one thing if I could, David. Yes. yes. So um, the city of Springfield, I, I just can't say enough good things about all the activities that they push out through neighborhoods and and. De- and kind of made me think of this because yes, the cleanups are absolutely fantastic. I've already got a PTO day scheduled for ours in Delaware, Amber Greek. <clears throat> um, so, so another thing that the city is putting out through their, their traffic folks, Mandy Butengen at uh, the city through Springfield Yields is a lantern walk. And I think this is the, la- or the, the very first time that they've done this and six neighborhoods have signed up for it, including Delaware. And basically we set up a one mile route. Ours happens to be around Delaware Elementary School. Um, Delaware neighborhood is not the only feeder neighborhood for Delaware Elementary because it's it's one of the designated special needs um, programming schools in Springfield. Um, But the city is gonna help us set up tables at the corners of that route and provide pedestrian safety information and swag and uh, the kids are gonna in class in the school make lanterns that they can carry that night. It's gonna be at seven o'clock in the evening when it's starting to get dark. So um, I just, I, I love the city for thinking of things like that to increase the, the safety of our neighborhoods and, and just put a lot of information out there about, about um, how to be neighborly and do all that. Um, 
One other comment that's that's more of a downer, and I'm sorry, but the other benefit of neighboring that we have discovered recently in Springfield is several of the neighborhoods, the um, organized neighborhood associations are coming up against major rezoning issues. And, uh, you know, we're finding ourselves behind the eight ball um, as we're trying to come together as neighborhoods, even those neighborhoods with organized associations are scrambling to come up against developers that want to cannibalize parts of our residential neighborhoods and make them commercial. And uh, that's, that's just a, an unseen um, benefit, we hope, of having a neighborhood organization and neighboring in place uh, is to be able to jump on those things as soon as you find out about them. Yeah, yeah, excellent example. Well, sky's the sky's the limit on these things, but simple simple gestures, uh, serves opportunities, uh, anything that helps you build a social connection with those living near you is a, a positive positive place to start. And uh, what we want to encourage on that day. And but you, who knows? You know, you may have another calling or another interest. I, I've been looking at some of the nominations that have come in and uh, on most engaged neighbor, and I see one from a community here that's nominated a gentleman who's uh, retired and who has bought several empty lots in the neighborhood. It, it reads like maybe it's an older neighborhood and has turned each of them into community gardens. And he has uh, rallied the neighbors. And when neighbors aren't working, he's done the work and he's delivered produce to all of the neighbors. And this is something he feels like is a calling for him and his retirement age. So uh, that's a great example of a neighbor. And I've seen another example on here of just someone who so they're getting ready to have their daughter's birthday party. The yard was not mowed. Their mower wasn't working. And this neighbor came over, mowed their entire yard, and then sent over cupcakes for the birthday. So it's it's simple acts of kindness and gestures that uh, really help uh, develop and maintain those neighborhood relationships. And so, so very important. Well, thank, thanks to each of you that shared today. It feels like the topic all fits together and was thrilled that Lynn was able to join us from the Post-Dispatch. We, we had kind of those macro view uh, perspectives and very personal perspectives too. So thanks to each of you for all you're doing and uh, we'll keep spreading the word with Neighboring 101. Lots of things to celebrate this month, hopefully with the uh, Neighbor Days. And then in October, uh, Richard Kite, who is a uh, He's the director of an ethics institute at uh, a university in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and uh, a co-host of a podcast. But he recently wrote a column about the importance of third places, if you're familiar with that concept. And he's going to be our guest in October, talking about the importance of third places and uh, how that can impact your, your neighborhood. So I'm just saying... And Nancy, your your example of neighborhoods advocating for things. Uh, I just want to give a short cel celebration. Republic is getting a new library. There was much discussion about where it should be located. The city had three pieces of property to donate to the cause. I was in a meeting. Two, two of them were high traffic sort of areas. And I was in a meeting and got to advocate about the third one, which is really in the middle of a neighborhood on the corner of it and there's neighborhoods that surround it and I just gave the pitch about the value of third places and lo and behold that is what the city council ended up picking Tuesday night I could hardly believe it I was just pinching myself so I I now have a new desk well, when it's built I'll have a new destination for every one of my morning walks uh the new republic library so <clears throat> I think people as Tim said are interested in this idea of, of neighboring and and neighborhoods and the peace that can come with that. So don't stop advocating for it and, and uh, please continue to be involved here with Neighboring 101. So thank you all for joining in today. Good to see everybody.